everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithke. Well, thank you very much, Rob, and welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show, the online show that focuses on digital creativity in all areas of education. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live on Wednesday, the 11th of August, 2021, via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group. We encourage you to say hi in the chat and let us know where you're from and where you teach. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. During this episode, we will be welcoming special guest and Adobe Education Leader from Victoria, Michelle Dennis, who will again be inspiring us. Adobe Education Leader Chris Betcher from New South Wales will be our thought leader for this episode. We'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit that is planned for the September school holidays, as well as a number of other Adobe and Education related resources that you can share with your students and your colleagues. And our behind the scenes guru, Adobe Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, will have a special quiz question for us. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, thank you, Rob. Let's now welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'll be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. To encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe related quiz question for you. Name the US singer songwriter who has just announced a new partnership with Adobe. Oh, there we go, Jerry. Good question. Just going to the chat now to see who's going to be the first one to give us a response to that. I can see a few people who are in the chat. We're seeing yeah, John. A few familiar faces. Yeah, Heath from Yapoon, nice to see you, Heath. And Bronwyn from Macquarie University is with us as well in the chat. I wonder if any of those are going to get the answer correct. If not, anyone else who's with us? Mm -hmm. There's the question again. Who is the US singer? Oh, well ben. done. Ben has joined us. Well done, Ben. That deserves a proper, proper round of applause. There it is. We've got it now. Congratulations. Hey, look, a double congratulations to Ben as well, who's just become an Adobe Education Leader. Well done, Ben. That'll do. <laughs> we very much uh, appreciate you having it, us in our community, and it's, it's terrific to have you there with us. And it looks like uh, John has also answered it, but John, you just missed out on the timing. Mm -hmm. So well done, Ben, and getting that right. Although Ben's a little bit apologetic about the spelling, I don't think Billy would mind too much. And Ben is acknowledging that he's very excited to be an Adobe Education Leader, as he should be. Well done. Now, folks, popular teenage US singer and songwriter Billy Eilish is again teaming up with Adobe. I think we're on the wrong share screen there, folks. I'll just. Mm -hmm. Jump to the right one. There we there go. I'm in. Teaming up with Adobe to inspire and empower anyone to creatively tell their stories. In a special blog post about this new partnership that came out last week, the Adobe communications team wrote that from the world's biggest stars to students just getting started, the creativity in others inspires creativity in ourselves. The blog post went on to say, 
we know that creativity is one of the greatest equalizers and connecting forces in the world. Each time we create, something new is inspired inside of us. Billie Eilish is an amazing artist with over 88 million Instagram followers. She is one of the biggest creative influences of our time. Billie has a special connection to the next generation of creators who are shaping and defining who they are and what they want to be. She will soon find a whole new audience when the next James Bond film, No Time to Die, is eventually launched globally in October because she co-wrote and sings the theme song. Encourage your students to go to bit.ly slash billyxadobe21 to be inspired by Billie Eilish to be creative. Billy encourages us all to turn our what ifs into reality with Adobe Creative Cloud and to create what is true to you. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Well, Michelle, welcome to the show. For those who haven't met you before, tell us a bit about your current teaching role. Well, I'm very lucky. Um, I'm the head of digital at Halebury, which means that I get to work across all the years from ELC to year 12 and look at how we can make technology be used to enhance education, which is basically playing with robots, with um, Adobe products, with all sorts of fun things. Hey, Michelle, before you go any further, tell us how long have you been at Halebury now? Oh, that's a good question. This is my about my ninth month at Halebury, so I'm very new to the school. Um, and, and before that, and before Halebury, I was at Strathcona, um, which is well known for having some amazing previous um, uh, innovative educators. Well, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Just thought I'd throw get you to throw that one in there, you know. Hand passed it yes, and you did yes, very some well. Sterling, some sterling alumni out of that particular school uh, as far as where you start. Let's bring Chris. <laughs> Let's bring, so, speaking of 88 million Instagram followers, <laughs> that's your boy. <laughs> we thought we'd throw, throw you to the screen. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so Chris, it's wonderful I to have you join myself. us again. Um, so after following 88 million Instagram followers, tell us about your role with Google. Oh, thank you. I don't actually have 88 million Instagram followers, but I got a few on Twitter. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, so uh, yeah, um, I work with Google these days as the program manager for Workspace um, and across Asia, New Zealand, uh, Asia, New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand, and more these days, Asia Pacific as well. So yeah, I get around. And Chris, just uh, out of interest, how long has it been now with your role at Google? Oh, just over two years, Tim's going for yeah. nearly two and a half years now, yeah. And so. prior to that, you were teaching in New South Wales. Just maybe tell, give us a very brief background as to what you're teaching. Yeah, about. I started as an art teacher um, originally and uh, taught art for a few years and then I kind of drifted into digital media and computing and design and multimedia and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> spent a lot of my misplaced youth in Photoshop. Um, and uh, InDesign and did school magazines with InDesign and well, I think it was called something else back then, but yeah, I've been, I've been playing with these tools for a long time. So um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, gosh, I don't know how many years. I think I worked out the other day, I've been a Photoshop user for about almost 30 years, I think it is. Wow, yeah, very early days. And I, I knew, knew of you when I was teaching at Strathcona all those years ago. Right. And, uh, and we've done a few events together and so on. And it's just amazing to see how the opportunities to be doing the jobs that we do now, me with Adobe and you with Google, have, right. have developed and it's been lovely to Absolutely. To I think connect. we bumped into each other for the first time at an Apple event. Yes, it could well have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rings, a, rings a bell. Michelle, tell us something interesting about yourself that not many people would know about. Well, I'm going to be talking a little bit about 3D today. And ironically, um, I've gone old school um, in my my outside of school life. I'm starting to become a potter. So I've now been doing that for two years, um, throwing pots um, and clay and making a big mess most of the time. Fantastic. Well, that's going to tie that in so perfectly with what I want to talk about, Michelle. That is so therapeutic with lockdown as well. You can just go 
It is meditation because you have to be <laughs> absolutely still. You can't touch your phone because you're like all covered yes. in clay. Um, oh, and what a great way to unplug. Focused. It is uh, like it's productive meditation because you've got something to show for it at the end. That is amazing. Um, so, Chris, can you tell us something about yourself that's not widely known? Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm I learning to speak Esperanto, which is an unusual language for people to learn to speak. But um, Not if you Bill that. Shatner. If it's good enough for Captain Kirk. That, that, correct, correct. Oh, oh, you're, you're, you're an enthusiast, I can say. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, no, I started with Duolingo a couple of years ago and actually I just passed my 1,000th day straight of um, Duolingo. Uh, and mostly Esperanto. I've, I got bored at times and I went and did a little Japanese and a little bit of Polish and other things, but mainly Esperanto. And I can I can read it reasonably well now. I'm still a bit dodgy with speaking it. but um, So, yeah. It's one oh, that is, that is very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris, for sharing. <laughs> Now, Michelle, tell us what you'll be sharing with us during this episode. Well, I know a lot of schools out there do a bit of STEM and STEAM, and as part of that, um, developing 3D objects is really cool. But if you're trying to 3D print them, it takes way too long and often ends up in some very messy um, plastic failures. So I'll be showing how you can use Adobe products to do some rapid prototyping so that when you are ready to 3D print, you know it's what you want to get printed. So cut out the waste time. Very nice. And Chris, what will you be sharing with us tonight? Oh, look, uh, a thought leader. What do you put on the, when you're wearing the thought leader hat? Um, I, just, I just had a little bit of thinking about some a message that I think all teachers need to hear. So I'll leave it at that. Terrific. All right, we look forward to hearing from both of you very soon. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. You may have already noticed that Michelle and Chris are both members of the AEL community, the Adobe Education Leaders community. This is the highest level of Adobe's education community programs, and it is a very exclusive program with only 64 teachers qualifying in the Australasian region, including a brand new one, Ben, who's with us at the moment live. Adobe Education Leaders are active members of the Adobe Education Exchange and are very passionate about using Adobe applications to enhance digital literacy, communication and creativity skills in schools and universities. They regularly share this passion with a network of educators wider than their own school or faculty and help support the work of the Adobe in Education team around the globe. If you're interested in becoming an AEL, the first step is to do the Adobe Creative Educator Program and get your ACE Level 1 and 2 badges at adobe.ly forward slash ACE. When you've been part of the ACE program and shown that you are part of a wide network of educators, you could be in line to be nominated to be an AEL. It's well worth the effort if you're keen to be inspired by an international network of creative educators, connect directly with and support the Adobe education team, run professional learning for your network with free Adobe software and merchandise. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, last week, the global Adobe education team led by Clara Galan ran the global Adobe for Education Summit. The theme for the global summit was creativity for the future with a focus on building creative skills for the future of work and learning in a post pandemic world. Over 8,000 teachers from 132 countries registered for this event, which involved 93 presenters and 114 sessions. Most of the sessions were not at suitable times for us in this part of the world, but they were recorded and are now available on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, which can be found at youtube.com forward slash Adobe for Education. Now I'm just going to jump into the Adobe for Education YouTube channel now live. And the way to get access to the material that came out of the summit is by going to this button here called videos, this little tab. That's the best way to go at the moment until they probably set up a special playlist just for the summit. But when you click on that videos tab, you can see 
all the latest videos that are on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel appear for you in the order, including what we're recording right now live, as you can see. And if we go back to the last episode we recorded two weeks ago on the 14th of July, directly after that is when we start seeing the material from the Global Summit. And then you can click through those videos and just watch the, the parts that you want to watch. And actually I'm going, yeah, so it's the July 28th event of, of Inject Creativity. And then we've got the opening remarks and define keynote. Uh, that's that's when the, the summit, the global summit begins or the recordings of them. So it, we encourage you to have a look at those at your leisure. You're, wa you're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. And it is a delight to welcome Adobe Education Leader, Michelle Dennis, to join us. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you. So today, what I'm going to show you is how you can take something from like Tinkercad or another 3D program and then translate it into um, augmented reality using Adobe Aero. So I'm going to start off with a um, just a simple shape that I've created here in Tinkercad. So this is just my idea of what maybe a perfume bottle could be. Um, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to then want to see it in um, on my desk or walking around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. So Tinkercad's incredibly easy to use. I've used it with year threes. Um, so uh, for those of you who aren't in Australia, um, ba basically about eight-year-olds up. Um, you just construct it like you almost would do with Lego. Just take your shapes and add them on top of each other. Once you've created your shapes in Tinkercad, I'm going to go to export and I'm going to export it as a GLB file. And you can see I've already done that in preparation. Now I'm going to go to Adobe Aero. Now Adobe Aero is part of the Creative Cloud, but it is a beta program. So when you open Creative Cloud Desktop, what you will do is you, you'll go down to 3D and AR. And inside here, amongst some of the amazing programs that are on there, is Adobe Aero. And Adobe Aero is magic because it allows you to take Photoshop files or 3D objects and bring them into space. Um, now, it does need an app to actually view them, but to compose them, you can use this desktop app, which is what I'm going to be using here. So I'm going to open Adobe Aero, which is here. And when you first get started, you're going to go create new. Give it a name. So I'm going to say perfume and press OK. And you'll see that I've got my stage here. I can use my right button on my mouse. Now, top tip, uh, when you're working in 3D, it's so much easier if you have a physical mouse. A lot of 3D programs require you to use not just one button, but all three, particularly that middle button. So please make um, so please think about getting an external mouse if you haven't already. So using my right mouse button, I can look around the stage area and I can see there is nothing in it. I can grab some objects from the left hand side. So for example, I can take some abstract shapes and add them by just clicking on them to add them to my stage. So there I've got this lovely golden droplet. Um, and you can also do things like rotate them. So if I hover over um, these buttons here, so you see this little blue dot here, that will allow me to rotate that dot so that's no longer pointing up. I'll make it face down. Um, you'll see that there are green items as well. That's a different direction. I'm going to actually move it up on my Y axis so it can float above what I'm doing. So you can see it's quite easy to just drop objects in and then move them around. I'm going to delete this one by clicking on it and pressing my delete button because I don't want to put in someone else's shapes. 
what I want to do is put in my own shape. So I'm going to go to my downloaded file. I'm going to just drag and drop it into Adobe Aero. And it's that simple. So there's my Tinkercad shape, my Tinkercad um, perfume bottle. Now, if you have time, you can bring this into Stager and do some really nice texturing so it looks really glass-like. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use a very simple shape. And I can now make it interactive. So that's one of the cool things I love about um, using Adobe Aero is you can just have a simple shape that you can see in 3D or you can take it and you can add some actions. So to add an action, it's on the bottom left-hand side and it's called Behaviour Builder. Like many other um, interaction programs, what we're looking for are triggers. Triggers are the things that tell it what you need to um, do and move. So um, in this case, I'm going to set up a trigger that says when I tap on that perfume bottom, bottle, something is going to happen. I can click on action here and choose what I want to happen when you click on that perfume bottle. So for example, I can make it play an audio file. So maybe you could get your students to explain the object and promote it to your customers. Uh, Timothy uh, Crossboat Grove has a really good question, by the way. I'm going to pause for a second. Um, so is it possible to export created objects from Dimension into Aero? Now, absolutely. So um, what I've done before is bring an object into Dimension, add some nice textures in an Adobe Illustrator file so that it's got a logo on it, and then bring it straight into Adobe Aero. So you can export it from Dimension and bring it into Aero. That's a great question and something that really um, looks really good. In this case here, my perfume bottle doesn't look as nice as all that. Um, I didn't bring it into Dimension. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is add an action and maybe I want to make it uh, play an image so I can make some images come up to, so that the client, when they see the perfume bottle, can have some ideas about what your, um, what your advertising might be. I can have audio so that my students can explain what they've done. But you can also do simple things like just making it bounce. Um, once you select what the action is going to be, on the right-hand side here, you can change um, what that looks like. So this is what the bounce looks like. Uh, so I can see that that went up 100 centimetres. That seems a little bit much. I'm going to change that to 10 centimetres. So I'm hoping for a little bit less of an um, orbital moment. So that's 10 centimetres for my little bounce when you touch it. That looks much, much better. And you can change um, this so that it's not just once, but it could be infinite. So that it keeps on bouncing over and over and over again. Um, you can also change the motion. So I'm doing something really simple, but you can create some really complex animations here, which can really make your objects shine. Once you've set up your scene with your object, um, and we can add some more layers to this later, I'm going to go to preview to see what it would look like from a user point of view. Um, so I'm using my right hand button to have a look around my bottle. That looks like what I want. I'm going to go back to edit and now I'm ready to share it. So I'm clicking on this share button here. It's in the top right hand corner and I'm going to create a link. Now there are two types of links that you can create. One is a URL link. Um, and I might even pop that into the private chat if anyone wants to share it. Um, but you can also, when you're sharing it um, and you create a link, get this QR code. And that's a really great way to um, just uh, open the Adobe Aero app on any iPhone, scan it with that QR code, and you can take this 3D object and see it on your desk or in other space. Now, this has been a really simple example, but you can start getting a little bit more complex. So 
for example, I might choose to add, um, let me see, I might choose to add some, a table for my bottle to sit on, just to give it a little bit of context. So I'm going to zoom in using my middle, middle button and my wheel. I'm going to take my, um, I might make the table a little bit bigger first. So I'm going to select the table. I'm going to make it bigger using the resize buttons, which are those squares. And I'm holding down shift so that my table doesn't lose proportion. I'm going to take my bottle and I'm going to put it on top of the table like so. When I zoom out, you'll see that a little bit better. There we go. And then you can show people, you know, compared to a table, how big would my perfume bottle be? So it'd be quite small. Once again, once you make a change, just go to share to link and you can create a new link to um, that VR project. It's incredibly easy to use. That's what I kind of love about Aero because this is just a simple example, but you can bring in Photoshop files, add it, take your layers, blow them apart and turn them into augmented reality artworks and just put that QR code on the side of um, next to the real artwork so that people can see it in a new and different way. So there's a whole lot of different ways that you can take this and um, apply it in the classroom. So simple. Um, it's included within your normal Adobe education price um, cost. So like, you know, it's not anything extra. Um, and the Adobe Aero app on your phone is also um, available for free. So you don't really need to um, know too much about it. You don't need to be an expert. It's just drag and drop. That's what I really love about it. So that's my little brief nugget of information on um, one thing that you can do to make your classrooms a little bit more magic. Thanks, Michelle. That was terrific. I'll just bring Erin back up to the screen too. Now, Michelle, um, I'm not, not sure if you saw this episode, but it was a little bit earlier this year, and I think we did one last year too, where uh, Jason from Brisbane, he created a 3D object out of Minecraft. Yes. And then he brought it into Aero. And then the, his is a boys' school that he works at, Villanova College in Brisbane. Uh, the boys were, <laughs> were moving around the, the playground, walking in and out of their Minecraft world. <laughs> it was so cool. So there's lots of different ways of creating your 3D objects, but when you bring them into something like Aero, it, it creates a whole new dimension, a whole new augmented reality experience for them. It's so cool. And Michelle, that's that's one of the best demonstrations I've seen of Aero on the desktop because uh, most of the time I've worked with Aero, it's, it's been on my iPhone or my iPad. So it's lovely to be able to see it used in different ways. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Thanks, Tim. I've really enjoyed it. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Adobe have recently launched a major partnership with the Khan Academy. The Khan Academy is a not-for-profit educational organization created in 2006 by Sal Khan with the goal of creating a set of online tools that help educate students. Originally focused on the teaching of mathematics, now with over 120 million registered users, the Khan Academy provides resources for a wide range of curriculum areas. The goal of this partnership is to support the development of new free online learning resources that foster creative and critical thinking skills, helping all students reach their potential and ultimately be better prepared for the future. The partnership includes a new course on the Adobe Education Exchange called Teach Creativity with Adobe and Khan Academy, as well as a series of teaching resources. Look up bit.ly slash adobe dash Khan dash course 21 for more information. The aim of the course and the teaching resources is to help teachers learn how to use creative activities and projects to drive student engagement, deepen their learning and set them up for future success. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke.
EduTech is the largest technology and education conference for this region of the world. It was meant to be hosted face to face at the Melbourne Convention Centre this year for the first time. But because of current COVID restrictions, it is again being held as a virtual event. Look up edutech.net.au to register if you haven't already. Adobe is again sponsoring Edutech, so here's a promo for the Adobe seminar session that will be run by Dr. Kitchen, Rob the Robot, and will feature about 25 Adobe education leaders. Now, Tim, let's tell the audience what we will be doing during this Edutech seminar session. Well, thanks, Rob. Great idea. During this session, we'll be introducing you to a science student and an English teacher who have had their academic and professional careers dramatically changed for the better thanks to Adobe's digital creativity tools. Hang on, Tim. Did you say a science student and an English teacher? That's right, Rob. Not Adobe's usual specialty curriculum areas. True. Yeah, things have changed over the past few years. And Adobe's new simple to use, low lift and high impact tools like Adobe Spark are very popular in just about every curriculum area these days. If you haven't experienced the value of Adobe Spark yet, we're going to have a hands-on aspect to this session involving the creation of an Adobe Spark project. I've told you my favourite Adobe apps. Well, we're going to hear from lots of teachers from around Australia and New Zealand share their favourites, and I'm tipping that Adobe Spark is going to highly feature. We're going to hear from some of the global members of the Adobe Education team, and we'll be leaving you with a number of resources and references that you can use to further enhance your professional development and share with your colleagues and students. And we're looking forward to connecting with you live for some Q&A, so have those questions ready. You can connect with the Adobe in Education team at any time and at your leisure via adobe.ly slash contact dash edu dash APAC. And make sure you visit Adobe's virtual EduTech booth during this conference. Well, there you go. That gives us a little taster of the Adobe seminar session that will be held next Wednesday, August 18 at 11.35 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Look up edutech.net.au to register and get involved. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. To all Queensland educators out there, Adobe is again involved in the QSite conference to be held on the 21st and 22nd of September in Toowoomba. QSite stands for Queensland Society for Information Technology and Education and the conference will be taking place at Toowoomba State High School and Dr Kitchen will be one of the keynote presenters and workshop presenters. Sorry, keynote speakers and workshop presenters. Find out more and register at qsite.edu.au. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. We have about 28,700 teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. Please do promote this program with your colleagues via adobe.ly slash ACE. The focus is not on Adobe skills, but understanding the importance of creativity in education. If you'd like to be guided through level one, Dr. Kitchen is running the next Be a Creative Educator course on Monday, the 30th of August, 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. More information can be found at our new short URL for this site, adobe.ly forward slash creative educator. Here are some Here's members some of the program sharing why you should be involved. You should join the Adobe Creative Educator program. You'll learn more and more about why creativity is such an important skill to teach our students. You should join the Adobe Creative Educator program because it's such an amazing community of inspiring educators where everyone shares what they learn and the tips and tricks they learn with using Adobe products. But we also learn from each other as well. It's a really supportive group of people. Because it's a great way for educators to stay connected with creative industries. 
you're not an Adobe Creative Educator yet, why not? Uh, it's time to get there. Great place to uh, meet like-minded teachers, share resources, uh, and get some great inspiration of other uh, very creative individuals. You should be an Adobe Creative Educator because it opens up a universe of ideas, resources, and access to amazing and inspirational professionals whose ideas and application and philosophies are incredibly inspirational and have helped me improve my practice, and I bet they'll do the same for you. You should join the Adobe Creative Educator program because we need to do more than just talk about how important creativity is. We need to actually do it. Hi folks. Well, it's now time to welcome our education thought leader for their five minute gem to inspire us and make us think more deeply about the importance of our role as educators. And our thought leader for this episode of Inject Creativity Live is Adobe Education Leader, Chris Betcher, Program Manager with Google for Education. Chris, over to you. Saluton. Saluton, Timo. <laughs> Mi volas raconti al vi uh, racontoi, du racontoi pri uh, creativio. No yeah. idea, but it sounds yeah. great. It sounds <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Good about creativity. We need some closed captionings happening there. <laughs> over to you, mate. All right, no worries. Um, thank you. Um, I uh, just want to tell you guys two stories about creativity, and I've called this getting it wrong, <laughs> right? Two stories about the value of making mistakes. So the first story is this. In August the 8th, 1969, a photographer walked out into a street in London and took this photo. And some of you might recognize where I'm going with this photo. Um, this photo is obviously Abbey Road, okay, the famous shot where the Beatles took that shot walking across the road. And the photographer who took that shot got up on a ladder and pointed his camera down the road, asked the band to come out and walk across the road. Now, if you're observant and you know the album cover I'm talking about, this is not it. If you look at the legs there of the characters, they're all wrong. Right, Paul's dragging his foot. George, don't know what George is doing. Like they're just, that's wrong. So he took another photo. They were walking the other way across the street this time. He literally made them walk across the street and walk back across the street and walk back across the street. Um, so he took a third photo. Oh, sorry, second photo. Uh, yeah, that's pretty ordinary. He took another photo. There's all these cars coming in the background, and and again, like, I don't know what George is doing there. And then there was this fourth photo, and. I have no idea what the three at the back are doing. And then there's a bus coming down the road. Anyway, this was photo number six. And John's wandering off at an angle. I don't know what that's about. And, and George is down the back daydreaming. I don't know what that's happening. Photo number five got it all right. Photo number five, the legs are all at the right angles. There's no traffic in the background. They were evenly spaced across the, the, the zebra crossing. That was the winner. And it was interesting that it took, there are only six photos. The, the photographer who took this to make that album cover took six photos and one of them was the money shot, obviously, and the others were pretty ordinary. And the reason I love that story, and by the way, there's a little URL down the bottom there, thebeatlesbible.com if you're interested in reading the story. The, the neat thing about that is that this photographer took the six photos and chose one. And the reason I think there's a lesson in that for everyone is, is this. There's some lessons for living about that. The first thing is there were six photos, not one, but six photos. To find the one good photo, he actually took five bad photos. And I think that's really important to recognise. And without the five bad photos, there actually probably wouldn't have been one good photo. So I think there's there's a really interesting lesson in there about productive failure, about this need to do things more than one time, to just repeat things and, and iterate on things and try things again. Because so often we get stuck in this little trap where we think, oh, we did we tried something and it didn't work. Oh, we have to like that was terrible, it was a failure. It's not a failure. You've got to do things more than one time in order to find the the bits that actually do work. So that's story number one. Story number two is this. 
This comes from a lovely book called Art and Fear. If you've never read it and you're at all in the creative spaces, I recommend this book, Art and Fear. And it tells this beautiful story about a pottery class. So, Michelle, if you're still listening, this is where the pottery link comes in, right? And the teacher of this pottery class decided to do an experiment. She took half the class and told half the class that their job was to make the most beautiful pot they could. They were going to be judged and graded for their work on the quality of the pot they produced. So they could research it. They could go and study up about what it took to do great pottery. They could do like they could really think about this design, but they could only make one pot and it had to be the best possible pot. And they would get graded on that. If it was really good, they'd get an A. If it wasn't so good, they might get a B or a C or a D. Okay. The other half of the class, she said to them, you're not going to be graded on quality. You're going to be graded on quantity. I don't care what your pots look like so long as you make a lot of them. In fact, the grading system for you guys is going to be if you make 50 pounds of pots, you're going to get this American uh, book. If you make 50 pounds of pots, you're going to get an A. If you make 40 pounds of pots, you're going to get a B and so on. And so the students who just wanted to get a good grade, obviously, they just made a lot of pots. <laughs> they just didn't care what they looked like. But the really interesting thing about this is that at the end of it all, the best pots came from the group that did the most pots. And the quote that, um, that from the book, it says, it seems that while the quantity group was busily churning out piles of work and learning from their mistakes, the quality group sat around theorizing about perfection. And in the end, they had little more to show for their efforts than grandiose theories and a pile of dead clay. And I think that's such a beautiful story for, for those of us who are working in creative industries and working with students about the idea of creativity. Because again, the lessons from living from story number two, there were lots of pots, not one. To make a good pot, they had to make a lot of bad pots. And finally, without the many bad pots, there probably wouldn't have been at least one good pot. So I think those two stories, the photos about the Beatles album cover and the pot making, I think there's a real parallel in that. And that is that, you know, why are we so afraid of getting it wrong? There's it, 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 such a fear in so many people that, oh, I've got to get it right. If I don't get it right, it's going to be the end of the world. Like, don't worry about getting things right all the time. In fact, you know, you should probably be wrong more often because the more often you're being wrong, the better better a chance that when you're right, you're going to be really right. Back to you, Tim. Lovely, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing. That was fantastic. And uh, yeah, just really appreciate the work that you put into that little story. And we look forward to hearing again from you in the near future. Thanks, mate. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. The 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit is being held as an online event on Wednesday, the 29th of September. This event is open to any educator in any sector, level and curriculum area. It's going to be a wonderful event involving presentations and news from the global Adobe Education team, classroom success stories and inspiration from local Adobe Education leaders and lots more. It is a free event and you can register your interest to be involved at adobe.ly forward slash edu dash summit 21. Please share this link with your colleagues and wider education networks and keep that day free. It's a school holiday period for most of you. If you are a member of the Adobe Education Leader community, there is a special day just for you the day prior on Tuesday, the 28th of September. If you're an, an Adobe Creative Educator, an ACE, or have at least enrolled in level one of the ACE program, there is a Creative Challenge Day for you and for the Adobe Education Leaders on Thursday, the 30th of September. More information about these extra days has already been sent to you, but will be, more information will be sent to you as well. Register now for the summit and we'll provide more details about the agenda in future episodes of this show. Let's find out who'll be going to the summit this year. Come join the passion, productivity, people and pizzazz at this year's APAC Adobe Education Summit. 
look at who's coming to the APAC, Adobe Education Summit. Hi, I'll be involved in the Adobe Education Summit this year because I love hanging out with creative educators who fill me with great ideas. It's such an amazing place to learn and then I can share this knowledge with my students. It's a fantastic opportunity to connect, network and share ideas with like-minded creative educators. Hi, I'm Erin Racy, Adobe Education Leader with TAFE Queensland, and I'll be at 2021's Adobe Education Summit. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because I love being among the first to learn about Adobe's latest creative tools. I'm passionate about creativity and innovation in education. Adobe tools help me and my students to be imaginative, creative, and innovative. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to engage with other creative educators. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Sydney and I'll see you at the APEC Adobe Education Summit. I love being inspired by teachers who use Adobe products and I love to find out the latest about the apps. Because it's a great way for me to connect and learn from creative educators right across Australia. I'm going for the practical, fun, challenging and creative experiences and to meet up with Adobe Educator mates of old and new to get that injection of creativity without the need for a needle or a mask. I'll be involved in the Adobe Summer because I love seeing what other educators are doing and then uh, being inspired to do the same. Adobe tools help my students and I be creative. I'm looking forward to seeing what other people around the world are doing with Adobe tools. I'm looking forward to learning new things so that I can use them in class with my students. Hi, I'll be coming to the Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to meet other creative educators around the world in your own home and see what they're doing with their students. It's always inspiring. I love it. G'day everybody, Brett Salakis here getting ready for the APAC Adobe Education Summit an excellent way to be inspired by creative educators. Adobe Education Summit is an awesome way to learn best practices from fellow like-minded educators in injecting creativity in the classroom. And thank you to all the Adobe education leaders who contributed to that clip. I've been getting some great video clips from the AELs recently. Here is what Eden Carey from Western Australia shared about how she uses Adobe tools to inspire creativity at Santa Maria College. Hi, I'm Eden Carey and the way we share creativity with Adobe in WA Australia is by using Adobe Photoshop, Premiere Pro and Animate to edit images, create short films and interactive animations. Twice a year we host an arts showcase of our students' work to the wider school community. Using QR codes and virtual displays, we inspire others to create something awesome. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education and the wider community. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will be on Wednesday the 25th of August at 6.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Our AEL presenter will be the very talented Adobe education leader, Joel Ahrens, media arts teacher at Camberwell South Primary School, who will be sharing how he used Adobe Photoshop Mix to inspire creativity with his students. For those watching the recording of this episode, join us live if you can in the future. It's always much more fun and interactive when you are live. For those watching live, get ready to move to bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen.adobe for our brief fireside chat, and we will see you at the next episode. Special thank you to Jerry and to Erin for helping to put this show together. Also, thank you to Freddie Clark, Course Development and Operations Manager at Edgegain, for making sure this show looks amazing on YouTube. Special thank you to Michelle Dennis and Chris Betcher for their contribution to this episode. See you next time. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. 
For those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Rathke, don't forget to keep being creative.